and we'll get started. Okay, so this lesson is all about Welcome to National 5 and Higher English. The reason I've done this one is, again, you've already, some schools have already moved you up to the next academic year because of the exams being cancelled. I'm sure that went down well or not. Uh, and some of you don't have a scooby-doo what National 5 English is all about, especially if you've been in S3 doing BGE course. So I thought I would just go over a wee revision on what to expect in fourth and fifth year. Now, before I get started, again, rubbish with technology, but if you can comment, right, or say hello, then that would be great. Now, I don't know who's watching. Have I taught you before? If I have, say hi. Unless you didn't like me, then don't bother. <laughs> I'm a bit like Marmite. What's Marmite? It's that thing that you like or hate. A bit like that. Uh, so, I anyway, I'd love if you could say hi, maybe where you're from. And let me know if you'd quite fancy me doing a little shout-out session at the end. Because that might be quite fun. I won't force you, you know. And I know what teenagers are like. I don't even want to talk to any of you, by the way. I don't even want MD talking about me. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to keep quiet. You don't all sound like that. Just some of the ones that I've taught. Um, so if you'd like to say hi to me, please say hi in the comments. Positive comments. Please don't swear because there are young kids watching as well and you'll just get blocked and you don't want that. Because you want to have the next few weeks with me. I'm sure. Right. So welcome to National 5 Higher English. The way this is going to work is every day I'm going to have a word of the day. This is going to help expand vocabulary because that's one thing as you progress through S4 and S5, you are expected to have quite an extensive vocabulary. So I thought it might be quite a good thing for every day that I do the lessons to just start with a word that you might not know and then I'll tell you what it means and then try to use that word today. Just to show off in front of one of your friends, or your, obviously, socially, not, I don't mean, don't, don't see them, but, you know, interactively online, or with one of your members of your family, okay? Try and use this word and show off. So today's word is idyllic. Idyllic is an adjective, and it basically means an extremely happy, picturesque, or peaceful place, or setting, or somewhere. So for a wee example, the, the sentence would be, your beautiful cherry blossom in the garden created such an idyllic setting. Okay, so that's the word of the day. Now I'm also going to do a little bit of spelling. I'm not going to do it every day. All I'm going to do is put one word up a day that I think at senior phase you will need to know. Because these are the words that will come up time and time again throughout the next year or two if you're doing that five to higher. So you really need to get to grips with them. I'm going to give you a spelling word every day. And then at the end of two weeks, I'm going to give you a wee spelling test. Dum, dum, dum. So you can see how you do. Hopefully, you'll start to learn them. So if you can get a bit of paper somewhere, jot them down. Again, I will be putting them on the Facebook groups page under files. They're all the words are going to get put up there. Uh, at the weekend for next week as well so you can get a wee head start if you want to what up and impress me okay so today's spelling word is character obviously that's one that will definitely come up over the next year or two in english all right so i'd like you hopefully you've got a pen and paper as i said at the beginning before you were waiting on my arrival i would like you Oh, sorry. I'd like you to jot down. You've got a minute just to get the brains moving, right, to get your thoughts going. You've got three words up there, national five and higher. I'd like you in one minute to write down anagrams of those words. So any words that you can make from those three words. All right. And I'm going to play a little bit of background music for one minute. To get you going. Alexa, play. Alexa, stop in one minute. Okay, I'll just stop playing in one minute.
I'm back. How did you get on? How many words did you get? Some of you might have been sitting there going, I don't even know what an anagram is. Hopefully you all do. I'll have a look at some of the comments, see if you've posted any words that you've managed to find out of that. And obviously after this lesson, if you want to have a wee competition with one of your siblings or a parent, see how many words you can all get, then see and then let me know tomorrow how many words that you came up with and have a wee bit of competition going on. It's always good. I like a bit of healthy rivalry. Not that I'm competitive. <laughs> anyway. Alright, so... The next wee thing I'd like you to think about is thinking back on the last three or four years that you've done English, right? A little, a little bit of evaluation, a wee bit of self-reflection. So I'd like you to start thinking about, and you can jot them down or you can just talk about them with somebody if you've got people around you or just process them internally or talk to yourself as I like to do. These questions. So what do you feel you were good at in English when you were younger? So the first two or three years, there must be something. Now I know teenagers are negative creatures. I hate you, I didn't actually burn slam. However, for this, I'd like you to try and think of something positive, okay? So something that you felt that you were good at or that you enjoyed when you were doing English in the first, second or third year or fourth year as well. Also, what was your favourite text? What was your favourite piece of writing, piece of literature? What did you enjoy doing? All right, was there a, fa a favourite book or a story or a poem or whatever it was? What did you like to, to do? What did you find more of a challenge? Right, we're not all good at everything. Myself, maths and I, I wouldn't say arch enemies, but yeah, don't, didn't always grasp it to be fair. Um, my daughter's doing something just now, um, simultaneous equations or something. She was asking me the other day and I was just like, what? Simultaneous equations? That sounds like a group from the 1980s. I had no idea. So that's where Google comes in handy. Thank goodness we've got that. So anyway, what did you find more of a challenge over the last few years? And lastly, what do you think National 5 or Higher English will be like? So I just want you to start thinking about those four things, jot them down, put them on the comments if you want, or if you want to do it privately, that's totally fine. Either chat them over with somebody or make a wee note of them. So it's just a little bit of reflection on your last couple of years, your last few years at high school and doing English. All right, I'll give you another minute to do that. Alexa, play. Alexa, stop in one minute. Okay, I'll just stop playing in one minute. Hello, I'm back. I feel like I should do the Jaws theme tune, you know, as I approach. Or Baby Shark, which is constantly in my house, and I'm sorry if it's already in your head. Do you know what I'm saying? Do, do, do. Anyway, focus, Leslie, focus. Alright, so hopefully you've had a wee chance to think about your previous experience in English. And now I'm going to talk to you about what to expect at National 5 and higher. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not cutting the screen off. My husband said, you're only half in the picture. You need to move over a bit. But I thought, well, I might look skinny if I'm only half in, yeah? 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 Woo! Anyway. So National 5, higher. What can you expect? So it's a skills-based course based on communication skills. Obviously, 
reading, writing, talking and listening is what you've been doing since primary one and these are just going to be developed and expanded over the next year or two. The difference is, I would have to say, even from speaking to previous kids, the jump from S3, like the junior phase, BGE, to senior phase is quite large. So you are going to have a lot of assignments, a lot of assessments going on with your chosen subjects, and there's going to be a lot more demands, paste, uh, demands placed on you. It's a very fast-paced course because there's a lot to get through, and that's why... I'm expecting that a lot of you have already been starting, thinking about folio pieces and things like that already, and your teachers have been giving you some work to do on that, because there is a lot to get through in the course. So therefore, you've got to study a lot harder than you were before. Oh no! I know, I'm sorry, but it's part of being successful, you have to work hard, and you will be given a lot more homework than you were before, <laughs> which you need to try and keep on top of, right, as you go. There's going to be a variety of literature being studied over the year, so it's entirely up to your teacher. Some schools sort of prescribe what they're doing, but hopefully some teachers will have a bit of autonomy, a bit of freedom on what to do. So they have a choice of what you're learning that year, what literature they enjoy and they want to pass on. So you could be doing six poems. What? Six poems? Yes, you're doing that as part of the Scottish curriculum, the critical reading part of the course. A novel, a play, short stories, non-fiction, it's totally up to the teacher, so you'll get a wee variety of literature. Then yourself, you're going to be writing in a lot of different genres, a lot of different styles. So over a year or two, you'll be doing critical essay writing, which is writing about literature, and creative writing, made up stories, that sort of thing, personal reflective essays, and either persuasive or discursive essays and obviously over the next few weeks I'll be giving you a lot of sort of support and advice about how to structure those, how to pick topics and things which is what we're going to look at on Friday so please tune in. And the other thing is that you're going to be developing textual analysis skills and close reading skills. Close reading? Oh I hate that, I hate reading. Well the clue's in the name you need to start reading if you don't already. I read my Facebook posts and my tweets. Does that count? No. You need to read proper literature, newspaper articles, those sorts of things. Again, I'll go into that in a lot more detail in the few weeks ahead. Right, carrying on then. So, course outline continued. Study a range of fiction, so poetry, prose, drama, I've already said that non-fiction text now that's really what you're going to be looking at for the close reading exam or RUI, whatever you'd like to call it so it's an unseen piece of usually from a newspaper article that you have to answer questions on one of the parts of the course is a scottish you've got to study sorry i've got a hair uh, you've got to study a scottish writer as part of the critical reading essay a reading exam sorry and your teacher will choose that so that can be a choice of six poems four short stories or a novel or a play that's entirely up to your individual teacher and developing close reading skills and critical essay writing as i've said so the actual component of the exam the exam is worth 70 percent ah! already got the fear don't worry you'll be prepared uh, it's worth 70 percent of the final grade there's two papers you'll be looking at. One is the RUI course reading, and that's, like I said, an unseen. You haven't seen it before, so you open it and go, oh, what's this about? I did it again. Uh, so that's that exam. And if you're doing that five, you'll be doing, you get an hour to read the passage and do the questions. If it's higher, you have two passages and you get an hour and a half. And for both levels, it's worth 30%. Alright, so it's worth 30 marks. Basically, if you just get your head round, every mark in English is 1%. Alright, now you and I know, I've just said, maths is not my forte. But I'm quite good at adding, because I worked in shops a lot when I was young. So, I'm no bad with, with the arithmetic. The other part of the exam is called the critical reading exam. So basically, that's an hour and a half. Some of you may obviously get additional time. 
for a variety of reasons. If you've got an additional support needs, you'll get some additional time allocated to you. But for everyone else, you get an hour and a half to do that. There's two exams to do within that. Each one is worth 20, aka 20%. So the two exams are, basically there's the Scottish text that I've mentioned already, where you have to look at a piece of the Scottish literature you've studied all year. It could be one of the poems, one of the short stories, or a section from a novel or a play, and then you answer questions on it. All right, but again, you'll have a, a lot of time to prepare for that one, and you've seen it before, so unlike the Rui, you'll know when you open it, oh yeah, I've done that poem already. Uh, the other exam is the critical essay. So again, that's a piece of literature that you've studied over the year and then you're writing an essay about it. I think the, the kids find that hard because you get 45 minutes to write the essay. You haven't seen the question before. But again, don't panic. Your teacher will take you through how to do that and give you lots of practice in class in time conditions hopefully as well so that you get a wee bit more familiar with how to do that. And Again, I'm going to be helping you try and structure a critical essay between now and the summer. So hopefully you'll find that helpful too. That exam, the critical essay exam, has to be a different genre. What does genre mean? Genre is a type of literature. Like, so I know like genre in a film is things like horror, comedy, you know, all of which is in this presentation today. But for the actual exam in English, it means prose, so short stories, novels, that sort of thing, poetry, drama, if you're doing a play or anything else, you can even do language, media, right, if you're doing a film, so teachers kind of have a bit of choice for that one. That has to be a different genre from the Scottish text, so you're not allowed to do six poems and then another poem for the essay. Again, this will all become clearer when you're back at school. The other 30%, so if you think 30% is the course reading, 20 and 20 for the other exams, that adds up to, shout it, 70! Yes, well done. The other 30 comes from a portfolio. Now, I can hear you thinking, a portfolio, is that not somewhere that you go through a door into space? No, that's a portal, and it's not also the place in Edinburgh, that's called Portobello. A portfolio is basically two pieces of writing which you've worked on independently, what does that mean, on your own, over the year, all right? So the deadline is usually the end of February or March, depending on what you're doing, that five or higher. And there are strict guidelines from the SQA on how much support you can get with that from your teacher. So they'll be able to give you a bit more help, input with that, but it has to be your work. So uh, the, the idea of, I'll be alright by the way because my pal Johnny, he did that five last year and I'm going to get his essay. No. Plagiarism. Big no no. Don't even go there. Don't even think. I'm going to get an essay off the internet. We know your writing style. Us teachers have known you for a year. So if you suddenly produce this piece of amazing writing that looks like war and peace, or you've called it that, then will know so don't be stupid you don't want to fail english and other subjects by plagiarizing so it's got to be your work okay okay and the, the folio or the portfolio usually just call it a folio consists of two pieces of writing again you get a whole year acad academic year to do so there's a creative piece broadly creative piece which can be short story or a personal reflective piece. There are other options, but they're generally the most common one. Or, and also a discursive essay. And that can take the form of a discursive essay, persuasive essay, transactional piece. Again, I'll go into this in more detail in that lesson. There's strict word limits from the SQA, although we love when you write and hand in 7,000 word essays. No. Uh, there are strict guidelines because obviously markers for the SQA have quite a lot to mark in a short period of time. So for that five, you've got a limit of a thousand words and for higher, it's 1300 words. That's the maximum word limit. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about this when we do essays later on. And each essay is worth 15 marks, aka 15%. So that's where the other 30 comes from. So 70 plus 30 is... 
Yay! Oh, I'm good. You know, it really annoys me when people say, I'm gonna give it 110%. So, so I've chatted enough, back over to you for another wee minute. So now I've talked a bit about, or a lot, about what Nat 5 and higher, all the parts that you're going to be doing, all the different elements to the course. Just spend a wee minute now thinking, what do you think you're going to enjoy this year? Again, don't be a typical teen. Nothing, I hate it! Just try and think of something positive, right? What do you think sounds quite interesting? What do you think will be the most challenging part of the course or is there one thing you hate? If I had a fiver for every time a kid went, oh, when I said I'm going to look at course reading. But anyway, you might love it. You could be one of those kids that just naturally loves reading. Please. Uh, and the last thing is over the next few weeks, what do you want me to help you with? I've already had a few people on the Facebook page asking for specific things and I'm going to have a wee look into those and try and plan ahead. But you, you guys really know the course more than perhaps your parents. So I'd like you to tell me and put it in the comments or send me a message on Facebook or whatever um, what you want me to cover. What are you struggling with? What would you like me to do to help? All right. So I'd just like you to have another minute Again, think it, write it, say it. Just a wee bit of feedback, a wee bit of personal reflection. What do you want me to do in the weeks ahead? Okay, Alexa, play. Alexa, stop in one minute. Okay, I'll just stop playing in one minute. I'm back. Technical hitch. I forgot the clicker. I'm professional at all times, as I always was in the classroom. Anyone who had me will know that is totally true. So in summary, and as you can see, there's a little summary picture. <laughs> Get used to the puns, because I love to be punny. That's a little table with a course outline, so it just tells you a little bit more. That's worth 30, that's worth 20, that's worth 30, that's worth 30, that's worth 30. So you can add it all up yourself. Again, this will get posted on the Facebook page on the group's file, because, again, it's quite nice for parents and guardians to see what their kids are actually doing. Because when I was at school many years ago, I know I don't look it, but uh, 21, we visited, we did standard grade, and you're all sitting there going, what's that? But yeah, totally different course, so they might not know, and this will help them see what you have to do, so they can make sure that you're doing it. Right, thinking about what the key elements are of English in fifth and fourth year, fifth year, sixth year, whatever you're in, based, is based on three words. Understanding is one of them. So I want you to think, I've got, you've got 20 seconds, I'm not going to bother with the music. Tell me what that word means without using the word understanding, right? Verbalise out loud in your head. Go, 20 seconds. What does to understand mean? Oh, meant to do that. Up 
with an answer? Isn't it hard to say to isn't it hard to define what understanding means without saying the word understand? It is. A wee definition. So it's all about knowledge, isn't it? To know something. I understand that eating moams is not good for my body or teeth. Yeah, I do it. So it's to show an awareness of something, to grasp it, to just click and you realise what it means. The word what is very important. We'll talk about that when we do really stuff on Friday. Tomorrow. Uh, it's, I've just written here, it's an essential element of the course. So it's to show an awareness. So when you're thinking about literature over the next year or two, you have to show that you've understood that literature, that you know what's the story about or the text, what's the poem about, who's written it, who's the main characters, what are the main themes. So it's all about grasping the main points, so how is it structured, that sort of thing, be able to answer the what questions, what's happening. Uh, and obviously with the Rui exam, you've got to do the same. So what is this article about? What's the writer's main point? What is his purpose? What is his point of view? That sort of thing. You've also got to do it um, in your own writing. So if you've got, the teacher's put up a plan, write about a time where you felt disappointed in yourself, right? You've got to show that you've understood what that task means. So you've got to apply that to your own written work too. Right, the next word, analyze. Again, 20 seconds. What does that word mean if you analyse something? All right. Say that again. Trigger that again. Apologies for keeping putting the clicker on. I think I'm just clicker happy. Wah, 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 wah. To analyse, this is a wee definition. You'll see this word a lot over the next year or two. So it's to examine something. Maybe you thought about that to inspect it. That's why there was a little magnifying glass. You're thinking about Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, or, or detectives. They analyse the scene for clues. So it's kind of like what you do when you've got reading or literature in front of you or a text. You have to try and look at it and think, how does that come across? That's the key word for analysis questions. How has that been portrayed? So it means to examine, inspect something in detail. That's a magnifying glass. So when you're doing this in the exam, there's various ways over the course that you'll be doing this. So when you're looking at literature, you've obviously got to look at the writer's craft for the Scottish part of the exam. When you're doing a critical essay, a lot of it is about analysis. Your feedback, your what have you got from that text? Why is that particular device or technique used? Again, we'll be doing loads of work on techniques over the next few weeks. And in the RUI, roughly half the paper in the RUI is understanding questions and half is analysis questions. Again, I'll be looking at a lot more of that stuff um, tomorrow. And in your own writing, you have to start applying these techniques that you've been learning into your own written work. And that is where the difference is between maybe what you've been doing so far. Some of you have been using amazing techniques, I know, but you'll be using a lot more of those, especially if you're going up to higher as well. Basically, I should be able to sit with my highlighter and pick out all those amazing techniques that you've applied. Again, we'll be doing work on that. Last but not least, evaluate. What does the word evaluate mean? And I promise I'll try not to press the clicker. Back in a moment. This is why the girl should sing. I'll be needing stitches. Sorry, I'm putting you off. Guess who's back? Back again. Leslie's back. I've stopped. So the scales were a clue. If you evaluate something, bit of this. Here's a little 
clue to what evaluate means. So if you buy something, or if you're looking for a new Xbox game, if you've worn them all out over the last nine weeks, then you would look at maybe Amazon reviews, talk to your pals, see what they think about it. That's evaluate. Go on TripAdvisor. What kind of hotel is that like? Oh, I can't wait to get a brother game, eh? Such a shame. They were all kind of stuck here. But we'll get there soon. Don't worry. So you'd look at what's the hotel like? What's the restaurant like? What's the theatre like? That's evaluate. People leave reviews. Same with people like The Witch. You know, if you were buying a new vacuum cleaner. These are the exciting things you do as a grown-up. Then you would maybe look, or if you were getting some work done in the house, you would maybe go to a website like trustatrader.com and these sorts of things to find people that have been evaluated by other people. And as you can see the top one, you might recognise some of them. evaluating my teaching style <laughs> zero uh, so uh, to evaluate basically means to analyze something make a judgment assess it is it effective or not now when you're doing things like a really paper course reading then it's always good to say positive things I know it's not easy for some of you right because you're just not in that frame of mind when you walk into that exam. But it's always usually better to talk about the effect of the writer. Sorry, I've realised how long this has taken. Better do a run through next time. If you've tuned off, sorry. Uh, and then you're going to say, why is that a particularly great device? So, final few words, don't worry, I know that you're probably falling asleep by now. Is because of the, how, how much work is thrown your way over the next year or two, it's not just for the Boy Scouts. Be prepared. I know that some of you like to stick your head in the sand, especially when all these deadlines are already coming in, show my homework and things like that. Oh, I can't do it. I'm just going to ignore it. Don't do that. Just tackle one thing at a time. Just like if you were working in a shop. You can only deal with one customer at a time, can't you? So just do one task at a time. Keep calm. Hand your homework in. But you have to be prepared to work hard like the Boy Scouts. Sorry, I've had another intruder. Every day as well, those who have ever taught me, taught me, that I've taught will know I love puns. So I thought I'd have a wee pun of the day. So here's the cheesy one here. I have so much room for you in my heart, or in my heart for you. Cheese, I know, but just thought I would start, finish this with something really positive. So try your best. Good luck. Hopefully you have found this useful. If you have, then if you haven't already done so, could you please, I beg of you, I beg of you please, to join the Aim Higher Facebook page or the resources page to access those revision materials. If you haven't, then pretty, pretty please with cherries at the top. Subscribe to the channel as well so that you can get the live streams or watch them back just for the absolute banter and like I said already I'm doing this for free I'm doing all these lessons for free I can't even tell you the work that goes into them I know it just looks like I'm a natural <laughs> but if you would like to shove a couple of quid for me for a cup of tea to keep me going through the night I do stay up very late uh, and a couple of Moam stripes then there's a wee link to a PayPal page just send 10p 20p, 2 quid, whatever, if you want, there's no obligation, because I do just want to do this to help everybody out there, alright, and so just remember, so tomorrow's lesson, we're doing a wee introduction to course reading at 2 o'clock, the morning lesson at 10.30 is on apostrophes, so if you're still sitting in higher, un, like, totally not got a clue about how to use an apostrophe, or you're an adult that wants a wee bit of revision, welcome, then join in at 10.30 tomorrow and if you're still then you can watch it later on the YouTube page <laughs> if you fancy me doing the shout outs let me know and I could start or finish with a wee shout out to each and every one of you um, tell your pals so that I don't know how many is here today could be two or three but just tell your pals that there's somebody make, um, helping 
at the moment and it would be amaze balls if you could tune in tomorrow all right so take care it's sunny who knew that was happening in scotland and uh, enjoy today enjoy the rest of your day and hopefully some of you will tune in tomorrow um before i go She's not got any light in the last few words. Say hello. Say bye bye, everyone. Say bye bye. Right. See you tomorrow, everyone. Take care. Bye.